Hey, what's everyone? Welcome back to Dark Souls. So, since I know people want more Dark Souls, and I cannot get the PvP working right now, and I have no freaking idea why, screw it, we are going to do a Mage playthrough. Now, if you saw my level 1 run, if you haven't, go freaking watch it. This is going to be a lot more casual, not just in terms of the gameplay, because, of course, we aren't level 1, and we're probably going to be the most OP class in the entire freaking game, but also just in terms of the commentary. I'm going to relax a lot more. If you want to join me, cool. If you don't, you don't have to watch it. All right, give me a moment here to make the character. And in this down, we are a grey-haired, ponytailed old freak with a terrible dress sense. My get, we need to replace this armor immediately. I don't care if we're a mage. This is awful. It's just awful. So anyway, like I say, it's going to be a lot more casual. I'm also going to try and talk a lot more about the lore than I did the first time around, because I did talk quite a bit about the lore, but there was also a lot of stuff that I just didn't mention, or I forgot, or I just didn't know at the time. Also, I skipped the intro cutscenes, because... We've all seen them a million freaking times, and again, if you really want to see them, you can always just go on YouTube, or go watch my Soul Level 1 run. Okay, so, plans for this character. We are not going to turn this into a PvP character for several reasons. One, I have a million freaking PvP characters, and two, like I said at the beginning of the video, I, for some damn reason, cannot seem to get invasions lately. I get them occasionally, but it's so few and far between, that's why I haven't been able to make a PvP video in literally freaking forever. So, what we're gonna do with this character instead, we're gonna level up a hell of a lot, try and make him into a powerful mage, and we're gonna keep our character human as much as we possibly can. Then that way, hopefully, we'll be the ones getting invaded, and we can put a whooping on them. It's all kinda up in the air, we might get invaded by nobody the entire freaking game. It's just Dark Souls, man, you might, and you might not. I tend to find when I don't want to get invaded, I get invaded literally all of the goddamn time, so you never know, now that I actually want to get invaded, it probably won't freaking happen. By the way, if you kill the Asylum Demon instead of running past him, he drops his Great Hammer, which is a... it's not a great strength weapon, but it's decent. You can get it a couple of other ways. If you really want to kill him right at the beginning, you can either do it just by beating him up with the little stub of the sword, which takes a ridiculous long time. I tried it, I think I was doing it for about 15 minutes and I'd like a quarter killed him or something. It was quite ridiculous, so I wouldn't suggest that. What you can do instead, just pick the black firebombs as your starting item. You can throw like six of him, something like that, and he will die. Hollow, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon. Then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know, and I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask, an undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. No, thank you for the free stuff. It's been a pleasure. So that there is Oscar. You may notice he's in a locked room in a pile of rubble with a hole in the ceiling. You can probably put two and two together and figure out that he got smashed through the ceiling by the asylum demon that was up there. Again, it's one of the things in Dark Souls. Ouch! You dick! It's not guaranteed. You just kind of have to figure things out for yourself. A lot of it is just assumptions, but it's a fairly good assumption that he probably was knocked down there by the asylum demon. And you may notice we got some souls when we run away from him, that was him dying. What characters do in Dark Souls, they don't die exactly as much as they turn hollow. Turning hollow in Dark Souls is something kinda akin to being a zombie, but not exactly the same thing. These guys are called Dreglings, they are hollows, they're like the most basic ones. What they've done is they've lost their humanity. Humanity in this game is a physical object, but also it's a metaphor. It means they've lost all hope, and they've just crumbled, and you know, they're not human anymore. They've lost their soul and their sanity. So, they are just mindless zombies now, and then they become evil. That's essentially the way it is. Well, maybe they're not strictly evil, but they do attack us, so they're complete dicks. By the way, you may have noticed there that jump attack I did on that guy's head. If you press forward and R2, or I guess left trigger, is it? I can never remember which is the trigger and the bumper. The one at the bottom on the right-hand side of the uh, Xbox pad, that does the jump attack. And if you do that from the top, you'll land on him and do extra damage that's more than just a normal plunging attack. So yeah, 
I would recommend you try that, but occasionally you are going to miss and look like a complete plunker. Luckily, we did not. Victory achieved. By the way, I will be talking a little bit about Dark Souls 2 in this playthrough, but it's going to be spoiler-free because I don't know any spoilers and I don't want to know any. But, you know, we'll speculate about different things. I'll talk about what I'm going to do in my playthrough of it because I will be doing it. However, I am PC Gamer and it's not coming out on PC until a little bit after the console release. They're saying it's going to be in the same month, so hopefully it'll only be a couple of weeks later. But, you know, we will see. Okay, so assuming you are completely new to Dark Souls, and I'm sure there's going to be someone watching this that is, these are bonfires. They are literally checkpoints. You may notice they're actually a pile of freaking bones, because to kindle a bonfire, which makes it more powerful and gives you more Estus Flasks, which is what you use to heal your character with, you use humanity. Humanity is essentially a piece of a human being. So, bonfires in this game are powered by dead bodies, yes? That is absolutely disgusting, but that is the God's honest freaking truth. Right, first things first, we're going to go down here. You don't need the Master Key to get down here. You do, however, need it to get to the uh, Valley of the Drakes. By the way, Valley of the Drakes, gotta say, of all the areas in the game, that was probably the most disappointing one for me, because when you first go in and you see the Undead Dragon, I was like, oh my god, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be dragons flying around and shit. No, Valley of the Drakes, there's like freaking nothing there, man. What is this? Pretty cool. But there's nothing there. Yeah, you get off the side. <laughs> I am such a bastard. So anyway, we're gonna go down here and get some stuff. Well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Rickett Vinheim. I was once an established smith, but look at me now. Can you believe it? Hmm? What is it? What is it? Have you? Oh no. Don't worry, I have no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I've not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in Vinod. Okay, so this guy, as he said, is a blacksmith. I don't know if he's in prison there or if he's just in there for his own safety. It sounds like more his own safety, but we don't really know. I'm back soon. Smithing helps soothe my nerves. Don't let me wither away out of idleness. Okay, so you may notice that I bought Soul Arrow and we already have Soul Arrow. The reason for that is they actually stack. You, at the moment, we have three equip slots for spells. One set of 30 goes in one, one set of 30 goes in the other, then we have 60 soul arrows. That is going to be our basic attack. Of course we can use this dagger, but as you can see, it's absolutely terrible. And we're not really going to raise, you know, strength or dexterity to make it any better, and therefore, any other weapons we get aren't going to be too good unless we use an elemental weapon. But we'll go into that later. For the most part, we are going to concentrate on being pure magic. Of course, you can't really be pure magic. Well, you probably can kill everything in Dark Souls just with magic, but it's extremely difficult. But that is going to be our main form of offense. And yes, yes, I am dicking around luring the draglings on me for no apparent reason whatsoever. What can I say? I like to live dangerously. Except they're all stuck in each other. God damn it, you guys suck. So anyway, we're going to go over here and get a soul of a bonfire keeper. What you do with those, you take them to another bonfire keeper, and there happens to be one in Fire Lake Shrine where we've begun the game, and then they can reinforce your Estus Flask to plus one, two, etc., up to seven. The more reinforced your flask is, the more they heal you. And it does a lot, actually. So a plus seven is a huge difference from a regular one. And we are going to suicide here because we ain't got many souls and we don't lose anything else. In Dark Souls, when you die, you lose two things. Your souls and your humanity. Humanity is up in the top left. You can see we got zero, so we ain't got any to lose. What you do with humanity, you can little bonfires and you can just pop them to heal yourself. Because uh, basically a humanity heals you, kind of like an Estus Flask, but a hell of a lot more. So... They're good for healing, and they're good for kindling bonfires, not a whole lot else. You do need them for some other stuff, like uh, giving them to Covenant Leaders to raise your rank and stuff like that, but generally speaking, those are the main two things you're going to use them for. Some people don't even ever really use them for healing. Personally, I probably use them for healing more than I actually kindle bonfires, because most of the time you don't really need to, at least not in, you know, regular game. Yeah. Soul Arrow! Soul Arrow! <laughs> Trust me, when we get some more spells, it's going to be a lot more interesting. Ouch! Okay, I completely screwed up that power. I screwed it up again, and now I'm freaking nearly dead. <laughs> Don't die to a draggling. I will never live it down. You'd be surprised, man. The very first time I played this game, I think I've told this story before, but uh, 
in the section we're coming up to, you'll notice that it's kind of just before the Taurus Demon. Just outside there, just before you get to the Black Knights, I died there probably about 15 times getting between the Bonfire and the Taurus Demon. It was ridiculous. The Draglings were just kicking my ass. Not the Black Knight, no. Just regular freaking Draglings. I don't know why. I guess I was just rushing. It's one of those things in Dark Souls. At certain points, you're going to have to go quickly, but for the most part, take your damn time. And decide what kind of character you want. Are you going to be rolling to evade, or are you just going to block? Because blocking, frankly, is probably the easier way to get away from no damage, but at the same time, rolling avoids damage completely, whereas blocking, you can kind of run into a sticky situation if you completely run out of stamina. I go with rolling as opposed to blocking, but I've seen people make it work with just blocking. It's kind of an easy way to play the game, as long as you manage your stamina. One little tactic that people always seem to forget is if you are blocking and you lower your shield, your stamina will recover a hell of a lot quicker. So if you get the chance between attacks, make sure you bring your shield down and then back up again when you need to block. Otherwise, your stamina is not going to regenerate hardly at all, and you are going to run into shit. Because if you run out of stamina, you're going to get staggered, and you're going to freaking die. You're going to have a bad time. What's up, Drake, buddy? So yes, in Dark Souls, that is not a dragon, that is a drake. Some people get very pissed off about that. I should probably call it a dragon just to piss those people off. I don't know why people get so pissy about it, but uh, there is a big difference. Basically, a drake is kind of like a dragon, except not immortal. Dragons are essentially the same thing, but much bigger and immortal. Similar as that, like you cannot kill a dragon. I believe there's only one, well, I guess there's kind of two dragons in the game, but one of them's a little bit different. I won't spoil that in case you don't know, but yes. Basically, all you really need to know, regular dragons are immortal, drakes are not. So that is why that is a drake. Apparently a very big freaking Drake, but it's a Drake. Like Drake and Josh without Josh and less shitty. By the way, I am skipping over a lot of treasure here, but most of it we really don't need. It's crossbows and crappy shields and stuff like that. There's nothing all too good here, especially for a mage. There is a few soul consumables. Basically, they're like souls you see in the bottom right. That's our currency. That's also what we use to level up. Souls are for a lot of things in this game, but we don't need that many of them. We are mostly well, just going to use them for leveling up and occasionally buying some stuff. You? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> creepy. Very, very creepy. So anyway, yes, as I was saying, there are soul consumables, which are like items that you use to give you souls, so you can keep them and not lose them on death like you would normally. What a waste of time. Go and fall off a cliff. How dare you? I bought something. You know what? Screw you. I'm going to break your stuff. You son of a bitch. Anyway, so yes. Basically, you want to keep the soul consumables for when you actually know you want to buy something or level up, then you can pop them when you know you're safe, and then use them, and that way you are not risking them. So, they're basically souls that you can keep safe as long as you want. So, soul consumables are handy, and some of them can give you like 10,000 or 25,000 souls, or maybe 20,000, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, yes, they are very handy for that, but we don't really need them, and the ones at this stage in the game are like 200 each, maybe 400, so it's not really worth me taking the detour. It's kind of just a waste of time at this point. By the way, I like the wooden shield. It's really light. It doesn't block all of melee damage. But for what it is, it's actually quite good considering the weights. It's a hell of a lot better than what we had. Now we just need to replace these terrible clothes. At least we haven't got the hat on anymore. I can't stand that hat. It's a terrible hat. Anyway, having rested at the bonfire, that means all of the enemies come back. Except bosses and mini-bosses. Mini-bosses aren't strictly mini-bosses, but that's what I call them. Basically, they are large, unique enemies that don't respawn like Black Knights or Boars and stuff like that. But some of them do respawn, but they're... Ouch! Holy shit! Okay, now I'm in trouble. Some of them do respawn, but that's usually later in the game when you're going to be fighting those enemies as kind of a standard. But at this point, if we run into a tough enemy, it's either going to be a boss or a mini-boss and therefore should not respawn. Now let's go... Ouch! What the hell? It's gonna be a guy waiting to ambush me around this corner. He will burst open the door if we go any closer. I wanna see if I can hit him from here. It's not gonna work, is it? God damn it, fine, come out. <laughs> By the way, he just boots the door down. Suck it. Some people always ask me, how do you parry? How are you so good at it? I don't understand the timing. It's very simple. When you get used to the sort of attacks that, that enemy does, you can usually see it being telegraphed, but. Even when you don't know what attacks the enemy does, usually you can pull it off if you just just watch the weapon. 
just before I hit you, not as it hits you, not after it hits you, not long before I hit you, literally a split second before the weapon is going to connect with you, then press the parry button. That's all you need to do. The easiest way to do it really is just to watch the guy's hands. The hand is kind of a big indicator as opposed to the weapon, because the weapon can be a different shape and it can kind of throw you off. So really, watch the hand just before I hit you, press parry. You'll get it down eventually, just keep freaking trying. What's up, buddy? I see you there. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, I screwed that up really bad. No, 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 don't poke me. Okay, we're fine. He did the slow one. There we go. Okay, I kind of screwed it up. Anyway, you may notice that I opened that door with a resonance key. That was why I bought from that, you know, grumpy bastard merchant. By the way, this is a freaking ambush. I think you can hit them from a distance with things like this, but it's extremely freaking difficult. Anyway, yeah, the resonance key, and that gave us some, uh, what the hell is it called? Gold pine resin. It's been a long time. What can I say, man? That will put lightning on our weapon. There are quite a few enemies in the game that are weak to lightning, the first two bosses in particular, so that's some good shit to pick up there. I advise you do that. It's only cost a thousand souls, it's really not that much, and you can save an NPC with a key later on as well. So, and since we're a mage, he's an extremely important NPC, so we are gonna have to do that. Well, I guess we don't have to do that, but it's a bloody good idea. What's up, buddy? Boom! <laughs> I'm gonna try and parry him and shoot him between shots, but uh, if I screw it up and he's too close to me, I may very well die, because one shot from that guy is going to nearly kill me, and it might stagger me, and then I won't be able to get away from the second one, so yeah. That's another thing you got to watch out for in Dark Souls. Even if you have enough HP to survive one hit, you may not have enough HP to survive a stagger, and that one hit might stagger you, and then you are screwed. So, good armor will stop you from getting staggered, but we do not have good armor right now. We are wearing freaking robes, which probably don't have any poise whatsoever. Poise is the stat that will stop you from getting staggered. Here we go, the Black Knight is dead, and we may as well grab the ring, even though it's kinda crappy. It raises your defense when your HP is very low, but since everything in Dark Souls hits so damn hard, you're probably gonna die regardless. Okay, and the Old Witch's Ring. I picked this for my starting gift. The reason, despite the fact it says it's seemingly useless, it's actually not. It doesn't do a whole lot, it's kinda like an Easter egg, but it's good from a lore perspective, you can learn a lot more about a character, so I'll show you that later. Yeah, yeah, like I say, it's, it doesn't really do much, but it's kind of nice. Anyway, we are about to take on our first boss of the game, the Taurus Demon, if we don't include the Asylum Demon, and frankly, I don't. What's up, Crystal Lizard, buddy? Die! Yeah. By the way, Crystal Lizards, in case you don't know, they will run away from you and disappear if you don't hit them enough, so you kind of got to stick on them like white on rice, which sounds like a very racist sentence when you put it that way. And there are going to be archers up here. Normally, I run up and kill them, but I kind of want to see if I can test them. How far do you have to be before they shoot you? Hello? Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Okay, fine, let's go kill the bastard, shall we? So anyway, on this bridge, we are going to get attacked by our first real boss. You know, besides the Asylum Demon, which, like I say, I don't really count because the guy sucks. What can I say? Anyway, the easiest way to take these guys out is just run straight past them and freaking backstab them because they are going to be trying to crossbow you as soon as you get up here. Sometimes they'll pull their swords out immediately, but most of the time, they are going to still be trying to shoot at you. As long as you are moving, an archer is not going to hit you. They don't have homing shots, even though they might curl at you. For the most part, as long as you keep going, you are not going to get hits. And you see that 131 critical on my dagger there? That's how much critical damage it does. What that means is when I backstab an enemy or parry them, it will do much more damage. Most weapons, in fact, almost all of them only have 100s. That is the kind of regular standard. That's normal backstab or parry damage. Something like this, a dagger or a rapier or whatever, will have very high crit damage. So these are really good for backstabbing and parrying, but not good for normal attacks. And since I backstab and parry most of the time, the dagger's kind of handy for us, considering it's really crappy. Now, I believe you can get this guy to jump off the edge, so this might be a very bad idea, and frankly, probably... Ouch! Okay, I'm nearly dead, so this is a very bad idea, but I want to get him to try and jump off the edge. I think if he bank steps or does a jump attack forward, ouch, kind of like that, then he can go over the side just over here, but uh, I've never actually managed to have him do it, so screw it, we're going to try... Oh, God, don't kick me off the edge! <laughs> that was very close! If this will probably get me killed, I really want you to go off the edge. God damn it. By the way, you can also climb up to the tower where those archers were and jump on his head from up there. But if you stand up there for too long, he will jump up with you and start attacking you up there. It's very dangerous. He can also attack you whilst you're on the ladder climbing up, so you got to be real freaking quick. God damn it, guy. Will you go off the freaking edge? You son of a bitch. Ouch. My bones. All of my bones. <laughs> what the hell? Shit. Okay. This is really, really risky. I know I'm dicking around here. Will you just come on? Come here. Come on. Come on, buddy. Jump at me. Jump at me, bro. Over here. No, no, no. You son of a bitch. God damn it. You're really annoying me. He had a freaking way. I think you can roll through his legs, but to, ouch. Damn, I really missed time that roll. I think you can roll through his legs, but you have to do it 
literally just as he's attacking you. Maybe I'm imagining that. I don't really know. Come on. Duh, 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 duh. Finally, he didn't freaking hit me. Okay. No, don't jump back. Come over here. Come on, buddy. Oh, my God. This guy is not freaking complying. I may just have to kill him. God damn it. Why can I never get you to go off the edge? I know he can do it. I've seen him do it in someone's video. I can't remember who the hell it was, but I know I freaking... Ouch! Okay, I'm nearly dead. We are down to our last Estus, and we need to use it to screw it. Let's just kill the guy now. But yes, I know I've seen it happen. I just can never seem to do it. God, you suck. And I suck as well, apparently. All right, come here, you. <laughs> yeah, nice job. About 60,000 feet away from you. So yeah, if you're having trouble with this boss, really, really easy. Run in, lure him into attacking you, roll backwards, shoot him, or run in and attack him between shots. He is extremely easy, trust me. If you're having problems with this guy, then I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems and the Taurus Demon ain't one. Except the fact that he nearly killed me. But to be fair, I was kind of trying to get him to jump off the edge. Right, one more shot, and you are mine. It might take two. Da -da -da -da. Okay. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Oh, damn it. Boom. Get ya. Sit down. Gotta love the death animation on that guy, so freaking epic! By the way, that's got me thinking, someone mentioned to me once that he thinks the Black Knights are ghosts of, you know, the other Black Knights that left the kiln because they disappear when they die, but when you think about it, any enemy in Dark Souls that's big and dies disappears, probably just because they don't want a giant corpse flapping around, because you know the physics on this game, they're kind of wonky as hell, which is like the best part about it. So yeah, I don't think that's necessarily indicative of that, I think it's just literally so you don't have a giant corpse that you can kick around. Uh. What's up, Rollier? I'm gonna skip over all his dialogue because we've all seen it before, and you know, if you really want to, you can always pause the video and read it. But yes, it's extremely long. Basically, he just says, Hi, I'm a good guy. I'm looking for my son. Do you want me to team up with you? Yes. And if you agree, you get the White Sand Soapstone, which you can place down the floor to leave a mark, which will let other players summon you so you can help them kill bosses. And also, you can then summon Solaire if you're human for certain boss fights. That's all this is about. Nice chatting with you, bro, Lair. Nice chatting with you. Right, let's get that hill out of here. Now, you may notice there's a giant freaking Drake on the bridge. Yes, that is the one from before. Now, he will not attack me if I go straight past him. At no point is he going to attack me because I've already lured him into firing the bridge. But if I go down and open up the shortcuts, then he will start flaming the bridge again. I don't know if that's a bug. I really have no idea. Maybe it's just so it's easy for you. I really don't know, but yes. I advise you run out, lure him out, and run back again like I did before. And that's the bonfire we were at just before the Taurus Demon, so now we have a shortcut down there. But because I've done that, he's now going to start burning the bridge again, so we got to be really freaking careful. I think this should be safe. Yes, just about. Any further than that, we are going to get burned. It won't kill you in one shot, but it will do most of your HP. Will you kill that guy? Thank you. My God. By the way, you can farm souls here, but it's not that quick. It's kind of boring. Basically, you can rest at the bonfire at the bottom of that ladder, run up, get him to kill all of the enemies here by burning them, run back down, rest at the bonfire, they respawn, you can rinse and repeat. You get like 400 times, something like that. It's really kind of slow. I wouldn't advise it, but you know, if you really want to, you can. If you wait here long enough, he's going to jump down and try and attack us. If you cut his tail off, you'll get the Drake Sword. It's a good starting weapon. It's kind of overpowered in the early game. It's very much frowned upon. I don't advise it because it's going to take the challenge out of the early game, but yes, in late game, it's really shit. Okay, let's open up this shortcut. What the hell? No, 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 don't refire on me. What the hell? Shit. <laughs> You're supposed to fly away, you son of a bitch. Okay, no, 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 run. Run, we have no Estus. Can't really go any further than this, otherwise enemies are going to attack me. You are a dick dragon. Okay, can the rest of the bonfire make me go away? No, no, no. no. <laughs> the rest of the bonfire, God damn you. Don't be so casual about it. Holy shit. That was very close to being my death there. Okay, so anyway, now that we've rested here, he's gonna fly away. Oh, by the way, if you pray to this broken statue out here, which we can't do right now, I can't remember if you have to get further in the game and speak to Solaire, or if there's a faith requirement, I'm not entirely sure, but that is how you join the Sunbro Covenants, so you can do jolly cooperation. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna end it here. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like, and I'll see you guys next time for more Dark Souls.